Hello everyone and welcome to another Genshin Impact lore video! Today, I want to go over the Blizzard Strayer artifact set as well as the Dragon Spine weapon series. These materials go over the lore of Dragon Spine long ago, including the civilization of Salvan Dagnir and the fall of the venomous dragon Durin. So, let's get right into it. Thousands of years ago, before the fall of the God of Storms Deck Arabian and the rise of the Animal Archon Barbados, Mondstadt was a cold and barren wasteland. This was likely due to the endless blizzards of the god known as Andreas, one of the kings of ice and frost, with the other king being the God of Storms. However, a certain part of Mondstadt was not covered in these blizzards. This place was a mountain known as Vindagnir, where the civilization of Salvandagnir flourished. The people who established this civilization came here as refugees from the snow and strife that consumed the rest of Mondstadt, and built what is today known as the Entombed City. As shown in the mural room within the city, the people of Salvandagnir enjoyed the blessings of Celestia, with the heavenly abode being moored over the mountain for a period of time. Eventually, the priest of the mountain, Varuk, had a daughter, who we only know as the Princess of Salvandagnir. She was born underneath a large white tree of great importance on the mountain, which was a part of Ermansul that would later be known as the Frostbearing Tree. The princess was born with the gifts of certain blessings. One of these blessings gave her the ability to foresee events of the future. She would eventually learn to paint and make frescoes, or murals, which contained depictions of the events that she foresaw. One day, however, she had a prophetic dream where she witnessed a black dragon falling onto the mountain and filling the land with a cloud of scarlet poison. Naturally, she took this as an omen of doom. A terrible event did happen soon after, but not the one the princess had foreseen. Instead of a dragon falling onto the mountain, it was the Skyfrost Nail that fell, which had been sent down by Celestia. Because of this, the civilization of Salvandagnir was shrouded by clouds and mist, and snowstorms raged throughout the mountain. During this time, there was a hero living on the mountain, who went by the name of Imanlauker. He was visiting from another nation, though exactly where he was from is unknown. Anyways, when the Skyfrost Nail fell, he decided to leave the mountain to try and find a way to save the nation. He was apparently quite close with the princess, as before he left, she gifted him a greatsword made out of star silver, the Snow Tomb Star Silver. As he began on his way, the princess called out to him, saying that she'd dedicate her fourth fresco to him, and that she'd wait for his return. However, Aimon Lauker was unable to hear her, as the snowstorms drowned out the sound of her voice. While the princess was working on her second fresco, her father, the priest Varuk, noticed that the trees were starting to wither. He decided to go to the peak of the mountain to seek guidance from Celestia. Before he went up the mountain, he talked to his daughter, expecting her to be finished with the second fresco by the time he returned. He also said that if the third painting was of thawing snow and ice, then he was certain everything would be fine. However, since it had been so long since he saw blue sky and green grass, and other circumstances, this is not what the third fresco would show, and it would be left unfinished. At some point soon after this, the Skyfrost Nail would mysteriously split into three pieces. Each of these pieces released an orb, which all froze the areas where they stopped. One of them ended up deep beneath the mountain in Starglow Cavern, another in an underground chamber on the city's outskirts, and the final one came down and destroyed the sacred white tree of Vindagnir. When the princess saw that the tree had been destroyed, she took the most complete branch of it to a small island nearby to try and graft it onto another tree. However, the tree withered, and the princess would share the same fate, dying on the island. 
The branch of the tree can still be seen here, along with the sword, whose owner is unclear. Then there was the kingdom's scribe, the one named Uko. During the disaster, they attempted to heal the ley lines, but they had already withered away. They would then find the princess's body and bury it. It is likely that her grave was the stone monument found outside of an entrance to Stargo Cavern, where the scribe's box item is also found. After burying the princess, Uko would proceed into Starglow Cavern, where they would make one of many carvings, which can be interacted with in the game to unlock the mural room. Eventually, Uko died as well, with their last words being a curse towards Celestia, and also Emilnauker, whom they believed had abandoned Solving Dognir. Uko also mentioned they heard of a new nation being built without gods, that being Conria, and they hoped that they would have the power to stand against the world. The priest Farouk would also die around this time as well. The exact circumstances of his death are unknown, but it is likely that he died atop the mountain. As for Imunlauker, he would find nothing on his search, and would soon return to Salvandagnir. Upon his return, however, he would discover that everyone had already died. These events left him disillusioned with Celestia, and he vowed to help them pass the time with a song of iron and blood. He would then begin to leave the mountain, but before he did, he would place the Snow Tomb Star Silver within the mural room in the city. After doing so, he would leave, searching for a land full of war for him to fight in. With that, the once prosperous civilization of Salvandagnir would be gone, but that's not the end of Dragonspine's stories. Starting with Imunlauker, his descendants, the Imunlauker clan, would reside around Mondstadt during the time of the Archon War. This clan was also one of the most prominent clans during the time of the Animal Archon Barbados and the God of Time Istaroth, alongside the Gunhilder clan and the Lawrence clan. With Imunlauker telling Celestia that he would help them pass the time with a song of iron and blood, and the fact that his descendants lived in Mondstadt, I can't help but wonder if the Bloodstained Knight was a descendant of his. He was from Mondstadt as well, and also had descriptions relating to iron and blood. That's a theory for another video though. Now, as you may recall from earlier in the video, the Princess of Salvandagnir once had a vision of a venomous dragon falling onto Dragonspine. During the Cataclysm 500 years prior to the game events, this dream would come true. The venomous dragon Durin, created by the alchemist Gold, would fall onto Dragonspine after a battle with Barbados and Dvalin. Sadly, as we learn from the Dragonspine Spear, Durin had no idea what kind of chaos he was causing. He was in a dream, and in this dream, he sang along with the people of Mondstadt and danced in the skies with Dvalin. However, as Dvalin hit him with the killing blow, he awoke from his dream. As he died, he wished most sincerely that they could have sang and danced together, even saying farewell to the lovely bard and the lovely dragon. When Durin died on the mountain, his corrosive powers were sealed from Vendognir's unnatural cold. The mountain was also renamed Dragonspine, due to his corpse now residing on it. The blood of his corpse flowed into the land, spreading across the mountain. When this happened, the frost-bearing tree spread its roots to absorb the blood. With the help of the Traveler, the frost-bearing tree would grow again, and would give the catalyst known as Frostbearer. Back during the Cataclysm, however, Conria, being at war with Celestia, would send ruin machines to the region of Dragonspine, but their mission was most likely not a success in any way. You can find ruin guards around the mountain that, when interacted with, give a series of records. When they are put together and deciphered, there is a message that reads, For the nation, we can't forgo the Skyborne power, but we failed. This likely means they were going after the Skyfrost Snail, but, as I said, they were not successful. Dragonspine's history is quite interesting, with Salvandagnir likely existing all the way back during the Divine Envoy era, which was long before the Archon War. 
The existence of an ermine soul tree on the mountain, which was used during the Divine Envoy era to help communicate with Celestia, points to Solomon Dagnir existing in this ancient era. I would love to hear your thoughts about Salvin Dagnir and Dragonspine in the comments below, as well as what lore you want me to cover as well. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.